What's the last thing you downloaded? Was it a movie, a song, an illegal complete set of Sims 2 expansion packs? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. With music streaming services, gaming platforms, and a general decrease of things to do online if you aren't willing to pay $10 to look at your own tweets, it seems that in the modern age of the internet, recreational downloads are on the decline. And by recreational downloads, I mean the random assortment of just stuff that used to more frequently occupy the hard drives of bored internet users before social media was the common online pastime instead of clicking on any random link that grabbed your attention. If recreational downloads still sounds too general, I'm talking about desktop buddies and screen mates, widgets, custom cursors, and most other vaguely sketchy software that's main appeal was that it looked cool even if it didn't really do anything. And best of all, you didn't have to pay a $10 subscription to use any of them, or usually any money at all. The main appeal of a lot of these programs is that they were cool and free, which usually also posed a decent risk of viruses and spyware, but who cares? I can tell you that I definitely didn't as a 10-year-old with free reign on the family desktop, because now I could collect my 100,000th visitor prize that I was lucky enough to win in style. There were a lot of downloads that didn't really fit into a category because they were either really specific or just weird and obscure. For example, I was tempted by fate many times to download at least one kind of free Club Penguin coins generator because another 10 year old on an unregistered hypercam recorded YouTube video told me to. A little fun fact about me though, I was really afraid of doing anything intentionally bad or against the rules when I was younger, lest I get arrested and never see my family or my Webkins account ever again. So needless to say, I didn't ever actually download any kind of Club Penguin cheat system, but they were pretty hard to resist. Can anyone who was braver than me let me know if they ever actually worked, just to ease my curiosity after all these years? There was also Desktop Destroyer that allowed you to, as the name implies, destroy your desktop with different crazy tools like a hammer, chainsaw, and flamethrower, among other things. What the program actually did was freeze whatever screen you were on and basically turn it into a more edgy version of kid pics, but I guess for the right audience this was still pretty cool. There were a decent amount of other desktop toys, as they were called, that functioned similarly with different interactions and themes, but I always remember Desktop Destroyer specifically when I think about this genre of download. I actually found out about Desktop Destroyer through yet another search involving Club Penguin, where I was trying to learn how to tip the iceberg, as one did back in 2008, and I came across a seemingly innocent video that would tell me all the iceberg tipping secrets I desired, but it was actually just some kid using desktop destroyer and given my aversion to doing bad things, including virtual violence, and not knowing that this was just some silly overlay program, I quickly clicked away for fear of being arrested for more penguin related crimes. I feel like music downloads kind of skirt the line of being included in my personal definition of recreational downloads because they're not quite obscure enough as some of these random programs were, but they did involve a lot of malware and viruses, so I think that they count. LimeWire existed as a very dubious program back in the day that offered neither safe nor legal downloads, but did at the very least promise a collection of files to download from, so take what you can get, I guess. LimeWire was a bit before my time, however I did still somewhat benefit from its legacy. When I got my first mp3 player, the holy grail of mid-2000s music players in all of its pill-shaped glory, my sister and I would individually search for songs to download and load onto it, much like LimeWire was used for, but we instead headed over to Google, typed in the song name, and added Mediafire after it in the search term to find the ripped song as a download. It wasn't always actually on Mediafire, which is a file hosting site if you're wondering, and it wasn't always the actual song it claimed to be, or sometimes a song at all. But it worked most of the time, at least. If it sounds tedious and unreliable, it's because it was. But boy was it worth it to be able to listen to such hits as Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne and Fergalicious by Fergie. 
so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily count this as a strange download in particular, mostly for the lack of a specific program and how common this practice was back in the day, but I just think it's fun to reminisce on the olden days of individually downloading tracks one by one, or in a zip file if you were brave enough, because it's such an outdated and obsolete way of doing things. I'd love to see historians that study this ancient tradition of ours at some point in the future. I'd also like to see historians try to decipher the strange witchcraft of digital familiars that conjure emails and viruses all at once. In other words, desktop buddies and screenmates. Desktop buddies are a kind of download that come in a lot of different varieties. There are animals, anime characters, and even officially licensed characters, usually distributed for some kind of promotion. Some of them can be interacted with, with varying responses after being clicked on, but a lot of them just kind of move around the screen or sit in place. They don't do much besides just being eye candy or something just cluttering up your screen, but they are a neat way to customize your desktop. A step up from the only animated desktop buddies, though, are the buddies that can be interacted with and act more like virtual assistants. These also came in a few different styles, like these very uncanny desktop mates that make me uncomfortable. Or the infamous Bonzi Buddy, a little purple monkey that could manage downloads, sing, laugh, and inject spyware into your computer all for free! Weirdly enough, desktop buddies and virtual screen pals got a kind of resurgence during the pandemic, being described as work-from-home companions and just being entertaining for anyone else who was stuck inside. As long as they don't look generally upsetting and don't come with malware as a feature, I think they're still a pretty cute idea and I'm glad they're not totally lost to time. Just make sure to be wary with what you're downloading. Toolbars are another kind of recreational download that I think encapsulates pretty well the made-up term as a whole. They didn't really do much, but they were everywhere, promised beholden treasures in the form of shortcuts and built-in search bars, and best of all, they were free! So why wouldn't you agree to their download and also permission to access and change files on the family computer? One of the more interesting things about toolbars to me is that they have been mostly forgotten after at some point being phased out altogether. I don't know if toolbars were quite as popular as I remember them to be, but I, for one, as a young kid with maybe a little too much unsupervised computer time growing up, found toolbars to be kind of fascinating. I don't remember how it started. It might have been an accidental click or one of those annoying forced installs that just randomly appeared one day. But after seeing the first glorious row of convenient, colorful buttons at the top of Internet Explorer, I was hooked. I realize now in retrospect that I'm pretty sure I was in the outlier group here as far as toolbar lovers go, but there was something about the idea of having a whole collection of powerful tools at my disposal no matter the website I went to that made it so that I rarely declined a download. I never got into Pokemon cards when I was younger, but I don't think I missed out that much because of how into collecting toolbars I was. A Google toolbar? Sure, I use Google all the time. Yahoo? Well, I do have an affinity for Yahoo Answers, aka the place I ask for Sims 3 troubleshooting tips and questions that feel too personal for Google. Ask.com has a toolbar? I mean, it has a weather app, how convenient is that? Facebook? I'm sure I'll appreciate that whenever my mom lets me get a Map Facebook. Quest? Oh yeah, my mom uses that all I the time. I have never used eBay in my AOL life. AOL has Better its own weather bar. app. I can Bay compare that to the ask.com. Right. Right. Dictionary.com, I know what a dictionary does. Perfect. Daily, Daily wellness guide to make sure I don't get swine flu. What was I doing again? Oh yeah. Nice. Obviously now, in hindsight, I see that always clicking yes whenever any random program or website asked if I wanted their toolbar was probably not the wisest decision. Most toolbars were unsurprisingly involved with selling web browsing data to advertisers, if not just full of straight up malware that seemingly had every senior citizen in 2009 make a group pact to collectively download McAfee for when they checked their emails once a month. 
don't know if it was the variety of search bars that all effectively did the same thing, just through different search engines. The collection of differently styled news, email, weather, and stocks buttons, all equally useful to a 10 year old. Or if I had just classified browser toolbars as one of those things that seemed grown up to use, even if I didn't really understand it, like checkbooks and spreadsheets. As fun as my random collection was though, there was one toolbar that was different than the rest, because this one didn't only have boring stuff like a weather app or a search bar. It had emoticons, cursors, and wallpapers all in one. It transcended the regular toolbar experience in more ways than one, and I considered it the holy grail of intrusive adware. I don't know where it initially came from, considering my problematic habit of downloading anything that showed up, but I was sure glad to have it. The cursor mania button on my favorite toolbar took you to yet another download that, as you might have guessed, promised a wide selection of free custom cursors. Maybe this one should have been pretty obvious that it was just a straight up virus, considering that changing the cursor icon is just an included personalization feature in Windows that you don't need an extra program for. But look at how fun and colorful and shiny they all are! Some of them are even animated. I was easily drawn in anyway, because it didn't seem like malware when Cursor Mania did function as advertised and I was too distracted by my brand new watermelon themed cursor to notice that anything could possibly be wrong. I don't think I bothered much with the wallpaper or screensaver buttons, though I'm sure that they led to a just as virus laden website or program for download despite the friendly dolphins and pictures of this late 2000s superstar that seemed harmless enough. The part of my favorite toolbar that I treasured the most was a shortcut to a little place called Smiley Central. Before emojis ruled the mobile world and before smartphones even took off, people had to turn to other means to express their emotions through a screen. If you weren't a copy and paster, most social sites like forums and IM tended to have their own versions of emoticons to use, but if you wanted to outshine them all and have the coolest smileys around, then you turned to Smiley Central. At least, that's what they wanted us to think. Ads for this download were everywhere in the late 2000s, and not just pop-ups and sidebar ads, but fully animated music videos and TV commercials. I don't know how successful they actually were, but apparently, according to their own ad, they were, at some point in 2009, the fifth most downloaded application on the web, if you can trust anything a malware-ridden smiley company has to say. They even went as far as to have physical merchandise made, from plushes to activity sets, which is so weird. I say that now, but if I ever saw one of these plushes as a kid, I probably would have asked my parents for one, because even if no one else actually did, I downloaded and used Smiley Central, and it became kind of an obsession. There was so much novelty in the thousands of different smileys that were featured that I just couldn't get anywhere else. The real Smiley Central unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, I know tragic, but this site has most of their archived collection, and I mean just look at them! They might pale in comparison to emojis now, but with such classics as Yassified, Single Mother of Two, Rotating 3D Frankenstein, Smiley with all of his toes out, Unlicensed Avatar ripoff, this unsettling creature, and Lip Filler Linda, as a 10 year old I was eating this up. I even downloaded additional software for an email host that I think was probably made by the same producers because it had Smiley Central and all of its glorious emoticons built right in. I was never huge on using tons of smileys or emotes before getting this new email, but that didn't stop me from including them in literally every email I sent from then on, and better or worse yet, sending and theming emails around new smileys that I found in the program and annoying everyone I knew. My friends and I mostly used email as an alternative to IM or social media, so we didn't exactly always have the most fruitful conversations. But wouldn't you know, with tons of new smiling, yellow, soulless, empty-eyed, yet wacky and animated smileys at my disposal, I suddenly had a lot to talk about.
Despite all the fun I was having, Smiley Central would soon bring me a lot of pain and trauma, or actually mostly just malware, but it felt much more serious than that. At some point throughout all of my days with my watermelon cursor and slightly unsettling use of smileys, I noticed that my Internet Explorer homepage was something weird, something called my web search. And wouldn't you know, that was the same name associated with Smiley Central and the toolbar that I added to my browser. What a weird coincidence. This would turn out to be my first real encounter with a computer virus, at least the first encounter where I noticed that all of my careless clicking was actually doing something. Afraid of being in trouble, though not even knowing what for, I tried to remove the toolbar and change the homepage back. But no matter what I did, this My Web Search toolbar kept returning. I didn't really have enough knowledge on computer viruses or malware or anything to know why this was kind of a bad sign, as in relating to privacy and data risks. I was just worried enough by the fact that I couldn't get it to go away that it actually kind of scared me as a kid. If this is the cost for all the smileys and the custom cursor, you can take them back. It's not worth it. I don't even really like watermelon. At this point, I was no longer amused by any of the toolbar's fun features that initially drew me in. My web search had turned into my personal equivalent of a cursed object from a horror movie that always shows back up, no matter what the distraught main character does to destroy it. And we all know what happens to the main character in a horror movie when something scary keeps following them. That's right, they get arrested. I think it was at this point when I realized I'd really messed something up that I finally resorted to telling my parents, even though I was still also worried about getting into trouble, because the looming presence of my now least favorite toolbar and search engine was haunting me enough to give in. I'm sure my dad ran some antivirus software and got rid of all the traces of the not-so-incriminating adware and fixed it, all without any arrests though I was given a bit of a lecture on why I shouldn't just download anything that promises bright colors and entertainment. <laughs> How was I supposed to know? And with that experience in mind, I guess it's kind of a good thing that recreational downloads aren't really a thing anymore, so that there are hopefully less malware infections, though at the same time, it does seem kind of a shame that kids online will never fully experience the untold wonders of mysterious downloads found across different corners of the internet. I'm sure there were plenty of other kinds of random freeware that I fortunately never encountered as a kid, as I clearly got enough of an experience just with Smiley Central alone. Tell me in the comments what kind of weird stuff you downloaded that you probably shouldn't have. I'm curious to know if I'm the only one that was obsessed with toolbars or thought I was haunted by malware. And on that note, I'm gonna go run a scan with my antivirus, just in case the curse of my web search somehow still lingers on after over 10 years. You can never be too sure. A huge thank you to Daniel E. from ABQ, Joe Cheeseman, Kevin Evans, Bunzo, Findicano and Irisi, Hannah and Ali, Hayden Campbell, Johan Aik, Lucy Likes Tegan and Sarah, Mark Kent, Mr. Pants, M. Wee, Oliver E., Paper Sam, Pixel Puppy, Sarah, The Goomba Mattress, Theodore Nicolaelius, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. Make sure you don't click on this super enticing, sketchy pop-up for the download of the new Dream Jelly ScreenMate. Don't click it. It installs partially into your soul so that you can never delete it. But it'll manage your emails, too. <laughs>